All right, now starting chapter five on quadratic functions. This is 5.1 graphing quadratic functions. So let's take a look here. Hey, where did you get those clothes? At the toilet store? Quadratic functions. Um, every single function you looked at prior to this point, every single linear equation you looked at prior to this point just had x's in it, regular old x's, which is right here. Now we're going to be solving equations that have x squares in them. So something squared is what we were looking at here. <clears throat> All right, parabola is a U-shaped graph, and the U can either curve up like that, or it can curve down. Um, if the U-shape is curved up, it is positive, it, like maybe it's a 5x squared, a 6x squared. If it goes down like that, it is a negative, so maybe it's negative x squared, negative 3x squared. Okay, those are examples of those parabolas. Throw me a frickin' bone here! So, vertex. The vertex of a parabola is either the lowest point or the highest point of the parabola. It's either the maximum point or the minimum point of the parabola. Okay? And once again, that would be the minimum value down there and the max up there. Um, the axis of symmetry. If you were to draw a vertical line through the parabola, it would look the same on both sides. So basically, right through that vertex point, if you draw a line straight down, you could have a mirror image of it on the other side, is basically what that is saying. So it looks just like that, right? Draw that, that's the axis of symmetry, it's through the vertex point, it's a mirror image, the same exact thing on both sides. Sorry, I farted. Graph of a quadratic function. So when you're graphing that, it takes the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So first, if a is positive, the parabola opens up. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. Okay, so that leading coefficient judges where it's going to open. Um, if A is a fraction, it opens wider. So what that means is if it was one half out in front, maybe a half x squared, maybe an eighth x squared, that means it's going to be uh, a wider parabola. If A is an integer or a whole number, then it becomes more narrow. So the bigger that integer, as in the, or like the absolute values and the distance from zero. The, so if you had a 10x squared or a negative 10x squared, it would be a sharper, thinner parabola. And the x coordinate of the vertex is also where the axis of symmetry is. What that basically means is the axis of symmetry will always go through that vertex point. <clears throat> to find that axis of symmetry, there is a formula there that's negative b over 2a. So negative b over 2a, that is the axis of symmetry. Negative b over 2a. Come here, I'm going to eat you. I'm bigger than you. I'm higher in the food chain. All right, so there is your graph, and this is what you need to keep in mind when you're doing these. Um, the first number in front of the x squared is an a, the number in front of the x is b, and c is the last number when we refer to this. So to find the vertex, the formula is negative b over 2a. So I take this negative 8, so it's negative, plug in a negative 8 on top, 2 times your a, which is 2, which turns into... Uh, negative 8 divided by 4, which is a negative 2, but I still have that negative out there, so it's negative, negative 2. It's a vertex point, so the x tells me that x is 2. So to find out what y is, to find a whole point, remember an ordered pair consists of an entire point, so in order to figure that out, I have to plug a 2 in for x, so it's 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2, that's an 8 over there. Um, 8 times 2 is 16, so I have 8 minus 16 plus 6, which is negative 2. So that is your vertex point. That entire item is your point. So that means I go over 2, and I go down 2, and I plot my vertex point. So now that I have my vertex point, that is also gives me the axis of symmetry. So I need to find other points according to that one. So what I'm saying is, let's find points around where this is. So if I know my axis of symmetry is at 2, let's see where the point is at 3. Let's see where the point is at 4. Let's see where the point is at 5. Or let's see where a point is at negative 1. Let's see where the point is at 0. Oh, sorry, 1, 0, and negative 1. If I see where they are around that axis of symmetry, I can find points that are close to the graph. So I'm going to try plugging in a 1, because if I plug in a 1, 
it's going to be somewhere on this vertical line. So I plug in a 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 8 times 1 is 8, so I put those together I get 0, which means a point one zero. So I go over 1 and up nothing and put a point. Because it is the axis of symmetry, that point actually tells me two points. That point tells me that there's another point identical to that on the same side, the same distance away from that line. So it's a distance of one, so I go one over in the other direction and I can put another point right there on the same side. So let's find one more point. I'm going to try plugging in zero because that would be an easy number to plug in. So if I plug in a zero, I end up getting six. So zero, six is a number to plug in. So that's over nothing and up one, two, three, four, five, six, and I put a point. This is a distance of one, two from the axis of symmetry, so I go over one, two, and put a point there. And now that I have enough points there, that's five points, it should be enough to decide on how the parabola looks, so I draw my line and connect the points. You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. All right, the vertex and intercept forms. This is the vertex form, um, where HK is the vertex, okay, so whatever makes it zero on the inside and the number on the outside, that is your H and K. Um, so you need to keep that in mind when you're doing this. And the intercept form is like this, and we normally don't use the uh, intercept form too much, but the uh, P and the Q are where uh, X crosses, those are where these intercepts are. Okay, so keep that in mind, P and Q are the X intercepts. Okay. So we uh, look at this by finding the vertex first. It's whatever makes this zero on the inside. So whatever makes this zero on the inside, that is a negative three, because negative three plus three is zero. And whatever the outside number is, that is your k. So there's your vertex point, which means I go over one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four, and I put a point right there. That is my vertex right there, so that means the axis of symmetry is there as well. I know since it's negative, my curve is going to go down. So since it's negative, I know the graph goes down, so plug in points or, um, in some numbers and find them. So I'm going to try plugging in a negative 2 because that's going to be close. So if I plug in a negative 2, negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative half is negative a half plus 4. That's 3.5. Uh, so that means I plug in negative 2. I go over negative two and up one, two, three and a half, which is right there, which means it's the same exact distance away on the other side. And then let's try plugging in a negative one. So when I plug in a negative one, I end up getting two as my answer, so that one is negative one. So I go over negative one and up two. So that's a distance of two, so there's a distance of two on that side, and there is my parabola. Quid pro quo, Mr. Power. Yes. Squid pro row. When we come back, we'll take a look at example 3 here. I don't want to run short on time, but we will finish up 5.1, which is graphing quadratic equations.